August 16, 1815. It was a normal day for almost everyone in Italy. The Industrial Revolution had just begun and Europe was entering into a new phase. But for a family on the hills of Betty, it was quite different. Margaret and Francis had a baby child, John Bosco. Two years after the special day, the father of John Bosco passed away. The family of three children was now to be handled by Mama Margaret. The unfortunate mother had to tell her own children to go to work. Little John along with Joseph used to do chores every day and supervise their stepbrother. Margaret stood as a pillar of kindness and encouragement for the children during the difficult times. Bosco was now nine years old. One day he had a dream. The dream inspired him to become a priest. Bosco knew his vocation. He wanted to keep poor young men from crime. But there was an obstacle. For being a priest, he had to study. And to study, he needed to have money. His family was poor and couldn't afford school. A good farmer next door helped him to study. Only when he was 15 did Don Bosco start to go to school. He used to work tirelessly after school to support himself. At school, he did exceptionally well and gained the respect of his teachers and friends. June 5th, 1841, the church bells rang and a group of young men were to be soon ordained priests. One of these was John Bosco. He was ordained in the Church of St. Francis of Assisi, and he offered his first Holy Mass as a priest. It was his first step towards his vocation. A misty day, the young priest was walking through the slums in Turin affected by the Industrial Revolution. All that he could see was poverty, impoverished boys working day and night only to starve. He called the boys and they followed him. Every Sunday they used to gather, maybe at a church or open land. The oratory, as John Bosco called them, would gather every week and he would give them spiritual instruction. One day, a ray of hope shone through the clouds. Don Bosco bought an empty land and built a chapel where the oratory could gather. It was a stormy night. Rain poured down like a waterfall and lightning flashed in anger. Don Bosco and Margaret were staying up at night and walking. Someone knocked on the door. A poor boy, wet thoroughly and starving, was seen. He became Don Bosco's first orphan. From that day on, many boys used to join the orphanage. He gave them shelter, food and education. Don Bosco had developed an education system on his own for his boys, which he called the preventive system. One day, a politician came to John Bosco and suggested the idea of forming a religious congregation. After many hours of thinking and praying, the congregation of St. Francis de Sales was established, popularly known as the Salatians. A few years later, he had a dream again, instructing him this time to help the poor girls and provide them education. He established the Salatian Sisters, the counterpart of the Salatians with co-founders as Mary Mazzarlo. Soon, the Salatians expanded their mission all around the world and provided education to thousands in different countries. Don Bosco was no longer young. His health began to weaken and he had lost sight in one eye. His legs were swollen and his back curved. 
Yet he used to say, First tell the devil to rest, and then I'll rest you. He used to wear cheap garments, lived in a small house, and was often seen working, even at an old age. But this same priest spent millions for his boys, opened more than a dozen schools, and built two churches. After Don Bosco's prayers, the lame would walk, the blind would see, and disease would immediately leave. Once, he even raised a dead boy to life. He could even foretell one's vocation and, amazingly, even the future. He used to say to his boys, Sanctity is easy. Pray to God every day, study well, and always be joyful and energetic. Remember, God wants you to be happy. Saint Dominic Savio is the greatest example of how the sanctity of this priest could change lives. His last days were difficult. He was old and struck by weakness. His body failed to provide him enough energy. But he still participated in the activities of the Salatians and was there till the day of his death as a source of inspiration. But this heavy burden weakened his body all the more that he could no longer work. He was on his bed, frail and weak. He said, Now I go to my rest. I shall not get up again. Lying on the bed, unable to move the weak body, he summoned for his boys and said to them, Do not forget these three things. Devotion to the Blessed Sacrament, devotion to Mary Help of Christians, and devotion to the Holy Father. January 31st 1888. It was a gloomy day, misty and cold. It was the end of the month and also the end of the life of a saint. Don Bosco passed away, aged 72. Don Bosco would often tell his followers, I have been an instrument in the hands of Mary. She has done everything. Had I been a worthier instrument, I would have accomplished a great deal more. 1st April 1934 It was Easter Sunday. Pope Pius XI got ready for the canonization of a priest who set a great example. Thousands were present at the ceremony of the canonization of John Bosco. Pope Pius XI, who was his close friend, called him father and teacher of youth. He is the patron saint of juvenile delinquents, school children, young men, illusionists and Christian apprentices. The Pope declared his feast to be celebrated every year on January 31st, the exact day his life ended and joined the communion of saints. Saint John Bosco is a saint that should inspire us. He lived in humility and in poverty. The schools established by the Salatians provide education to thousands. He took care of hundreds of impoverished boys who were greatly affected by the Industrial Revolution. He worked tirelessly day and night to help the poor and provide education. By living in poverty but at the same time spending millions for charity, he is a great example. Saint John Bosco, pray for us.